Welcome, everybody, to Dude-tacular, where curiosity meets creativity. I'm your host, Freeman, joined by my co-host, Colt. Say hi. Hola. And today we're joined by Deadly Dill. Colt, tell Deadly us about Deadly Dill. Deadly Dill is a beautiful bearded ginger man who, as a entrepreneur, has started his own business of Walter World Media. He uh, is a social media guru. We think so, at least. And um, a mid-tier Apex player. Welcome, everybody, to the show, <laughs> Deadly Deal. <laughs> a mid-tier Apex player. I'm fine with that. I'm 100% fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. I thought you'd like that one. <laughs> so welcome, Dill, to the show. And uh, thank you, Colt, for that glowing introduction uh, that you didn't come up with on the fly. Dill, could you briefly introduce yourself and what is it you do that if we missed anything. Yeah. Um, obviously deadly deal. I think, I mean, I think we did, did we do a podcast before together? I think I've, we've done something together at some point or played games together, played but games. anyway, yeah. Anyway, if you don't know, who I am deadly deal gaming, um, everyone's favorite ginger beard gamer, of course. Um, uh, anyway, you guys said it, you guys said it right. Yeah. I am a entrepreneur. I started my own business, social media marketing, uh, and business consulting. I've been doing that for about a year now. Um, we, uh, we do gaming content. We do, we just started our own family, um, vlog channel, kind of doing more family oriented content with my kids and like doing different kinds of games and challenges and family vlogs and stuff like that. Um, got three kids. I've been married for seven years to my amazing wife, Elizabeth, and I live in the great state of Louisiana where we wrestle gators and everybody's your cousin, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> ah, amazing wait sorry amazing. that was elevated never mind anyway go ahead <laughs> yeah, so, that's about it dill thank mm -hmm. you for that glowing introduction yes. of yourself now now we have two glowing introductions <laughs> i will say about the gator thing uh i think we wrestle gators better here in florida than uh yeah. than you guys know, do man. in alabama or I know, louisiana man. Cousin Boudreaux down the street has like at least three on a leash walking him down the street. So, I mean, not only do we, not only do we wrestle them, we tame them. <laughs> <laughs> They're the dog, bro. I say be, instead of beware of dog, it says beware of gator on everyone's houses. <laughs> it is true. So Dill, what was it that initially sparked your interest in being a content creator? Ooh, how long do you got? <laughs> as long as you, you need a minute and a half. <laughs> right. Uh, long, okay. We have a thousand questions we need to ask, so I need at least a minute and a half. Okay. Um, uh, content creation for me started um, back when, in, back in 2019, I moved to Louisiana in uh, 2016. Always gamed, always done all that, but I started to like, kind of like, Three years in, I was like, man, I don't have any friends. Like, I'm tired of, we're just, you know, got married, have a kid now. I don't really have any friends or anything. And I keep hearing about all these cool stories of, um, of all these different, different gamers, like making friends online and like, you know, just building that community. I've never had that. I'm like, dude, I want to have, I want to have some friends who are gamers. Like, I'm tired of like not having anybody that I know that's a gamer or like being able to like connect with people on that level. Um, so I was like, dude, let's try it. Let's just let's stream and see what happens. Um, and then I started streaming and that was a, was a big reason why I started because I just wanted to have friends. And then as it continued to move forward, um, got involved with, um, got involved with, you know, what we used to all be part with GMA and everything like that with God on activated and found out that there was other Christian gamers and got plugged into that and started wanting to use my platform to reach gamers for Christ. And, um, and just kind of wanted to also do that, but then also fulfill that creative nature in me too. I've always been, I've always loved the, you know, the creative scene. I've always loved being a part of it. Um, I've always loved making videos and doing like photography and doing social media stuff and just being that kind of anything that's multimedia. I've really, really enjoyed it. So it kind of evolved from, I got in, I was streaming, I was doing Apex. I was, I was gaining a big following with that. And it just kind of evolved into like just media in general so not only now we're, we're streaming, creating content, but we created a whole, I created a whole company out of content creation and doing all that. And so it kind of evolved, but the biggest reason was because I just wanted to make friends. That's the biggest reason why I got into content was because I wanted friends that had like-mindedness and wanted to 
do the same thing and wanted to be involved in the same thing and being able to share those interests. And I can honestly say I probably I've met some of my best friends through just gaming and through content creation the last how many years now? Four years now, going on five. I yeah. can relate to that. I want friends too. <laughs> We're still, we're still working on that part. Yeah, <laughs> so, not really a friend, right? No, yeah. <laughs> He's my, my co- co-worker. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we quit being friends. We started being co-workers now. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, that's a big, that's a big reason, man. It's just being able to have the community and not realizing how like totally vast and awesome like the content creator space is. Obviously, you know, there's always drama in every space, and we've we've all experienced that, but same time it's probably been the most like it's just been the coolest thing to be a part of you know and um thinking that i was going to be a pastor my whole life you know and (laughs) moving into this direction of like wow i'm doing content for a living it may not be my own content right now but i'm creating stuff for other people and it's just super fulfilling you know and it's fun It it gives me that creative edge and i'm able to be home and all that good stuff so that's a big, big reason why I started it all. And I, I don't think I would change it. I'm really glad I felt that need to want to create friends and, you know, and uh, create community and, and meet friends and, and all that. So it's been, it's been a cool ride, man. It's been really, really awesome. Was there uh, any type of particular content creator that inspired you to start or even inspired you to start your own media company at all? Um, so to be honest, so this is funny. I didn't, I didn't know too much about the content and gaming scene when I started. Like I knew who Ninja and Tim the Tatman and Dr. Disrespect were. Yeah. I knew I knew nobody else. Like I didn't, I, you know, I so when I started, I didn't know who FaZe was. I didn't know what 100 Thieves was. I didn't know what any of these people were at all. And so when I started joining this, I was like, I just did it because because I heard about it. But who really got me into it was actually one of when I was a youth pastor at a youth leader and him and his wife we're streaming Fortnite all the time. He was like, dude, this is really cool. I like, should try it. You're a gamer, like do it. And I was like, okay, well let's, let's, let's see what happens. You know, let's, you know, let's just fire it up and and go for it. And so that, that was him. He's the one who kind of ushered me in that direction. Cause he was like, you would probably be really good at this. And um, so I did that. And then starting my own business was kind of like, it was actually my pastor. My pastor was the ones like, Hey, like we see, we see this, uh, you know, I see this, you know, thing in you with, with as far as what you've been doing on Twitch and what you've been doing on multimedia stuff. And I feel like I, he literally came up to me and was like, I feel like I'm, I'm trapping you with inside the church. Like, I feel like I'm like you working here is me putting you in a box of what you can actually do like mm-hmm. long-term. He's like, I don't need you at the church 24 seven. Like you shouldn't need to be here 24 seven. There's so much more that God wants to do with you. And so right. I was like, Let's go. And so he really inspired me to do it. But then also seeing some other people too, I'd say some close friends, uh, one of my good friends, Sooner, uh, Sooner Creative is his username on on Twitter, but he does a lot of stuff for um, Big E and Joe Woe. Um, you know, Joe is big Call of Duty content creator, of course, and I'll probably all of us know who he is. And then Big E. Um, and so he does a lot of stuff with him and I've been him when we were all streaming. And so he actually stopped streaming and now he uses his like creativity and his content creation knowledge to help other streamers and other creators. And so kind of, he had a little bit of a role with like just indirectly with inspiring me to want to move in that direction and, um, and just, just go for it, you know, and, and create just because, you know, and just because I'm not creating or making a living off of my own content at the moment doesn't mean that I'm not a creator. And so it's really kind of cool right. to see that kind of aspect, you know, so. mm-hmm. that's awesome. So yeah. when you did decide you wanted to take that jump into content creation, how did those first steps go for most people? Right. Uh, these days, it's as simple as just firing up your Xbox or your PlayStation and you can stream from that. But right. if you go back to anything past, you know, six years ago, there really wasn't a thing. So for you, I guess, what did that look like? Yeah. Um, I had an Xbox original Xbox one. And <laughs> so I, yeah. yeah, I had an original Xbox one and I had a, a 19 inch. It wasn't even an HDMI monitor. It was a D it wasn't the VGA, but it was a DVI. It was DVI mm-hmm. to HDMI. I had to do, I had to do an adapter. And so it was just like this, <laughs> yep. just jankety, tiny, <laughs> 19 inch rickety, like old, like just monitor. And I set it up upstairs 
and I just used the Twitch. I used the Twitch uh, app on Xbox, and I just went for it. I had no, I had no, um, no camera for like the first, you know, six months of me streaming. I was streaming, you know, off of my Xbox, and I was rolling with that. And so, my big, I was just getting out there and just doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and it was weird now seeing like where I'm at now, and like seeing how it's evolved. And I'm like, dude, I got like three monitors right here, and I have using a Sony alpha series for like my webcam now when I wasn't using any of that stuff before. Um, it's kind of cool to see how it's evolved. And, um, but yeah, I started, I started with just an Xbox and, and I just went for it and I just enjoyed it. I used my headset mic that I had, uh, as my microphone. And when I got the webcam, I had that little, you know, the Logitech, I think it was like just a 720p webcam and yep. just hooked it up and it was mm-hmm. awesome. And uh, we just went after it. And I, I streamed in our loft at our condo. We had a one bedroom condo with a loft and it was like half my daughter's nursery too. Like, and so it was just, you know, we just went after it and just had fun with it. And then I eventually upgraded it to like, you know, a cool little monitor and it went forward from there and, and just had fun with it, man. And I think I, I was thinking back on those. I was like, man, that was a really cool time, you know? And I think, I think a lot of people want to be like in this spot, like where you're like, okay, I've had some sort of success. I, you know, you have the PC and you have all the monitors and you have like the stuff to make things look legit. And it does help. And at the end of the day, it does help it improve your stream quality and stuff like that, having the right equipment and everything. But I was thinking back, I was like, man, I really appreciated those days. They were really fun because it was starting something from the ground up and it was starting something fresh and it was starting something from um, just nothing and just building it to something that it is now, you know, like I'd always thought about maybe even starting over again, just for the heck of it as something totally different, like not even like keeping this the same. And then like, just having an experiment of like, let's just try something new and like, not, you know, keep it maybe disconnected from the people that I know and see <laughs> like, and see what happens with it. I always thought about trying to like do something because now with the knowledge that I have now, I know mm-hmm. that I know what it takes to build something. I know what it takes to do a lot of this stuff, but I think a lot of people I think a lot of people will, um, they look back at those times or maybe they're even in that moment where they're still streaming off their Xbox and they're just like bummed and depressed about it all and not really wanting to give it their all because it's like, I don't have the PC. I don't have this. I'm like, dude, like I remember I got affiliate with no webcam streaming off my Xbox. Just, having fun with it, you know, and I love those moments. It was super fun, yeah. you know, yeah. and you, you don't need all so, yeah. the fancy stuff. No, you don't, bro. I yeah. think that's a, such a, that's such a, it's such a cliche and it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's how it's portrayed on media too. Like, you know, everyone, you know, see people with the cool PCs and, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. all this stuff, all the monitors, all the mics. And it's like I said, it's fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like having a, having this mic compared to, my headset mic that I used to have, or my little snowball that I used to have. A night difference. And day. Yeah. <laughs> night and day difference. Right. And like the third, I have the 32 inch, like, you know, 160, 165 Hertz monitor that I'm using now compared to like my 19 inch that I used to have. Like, it's a big difference. Right. <laughs> sure. But I don't know, man. Like, I think, I think a lot of people um, despise the small beginnings and they're not, they don't have fun with it. And I think that's an encouragement right. to like anybody who's a streamer. It's like, dude, like, enjoy like the enjoy the startup moments and yeah. don't put so much pressure on yourself either because like when i started streaming i was like dude there's i do i want to grow yet yeah, but i was like dude there's i don't have i'm just gonna do this and i don't have any expectation to be have like all these followers and stuff like that and so when i moved forward and i we started t- and i started tiktok obviously during covid and all that started happening it was like whoa like what like this is something that i could do I didn't start off doing it with the hope, with the anticipation of like, man, I'm going to get a hundred thousand followers today. I went into it because I was like, man, I love gaming. I love, I love hanging out with people. I love chatting with people. Let's just do this and see what happens with it. And I think a lot of people put the expectations so high that it's like, it's so hard to reach. And so they don't have fun. Like in the beginning stages of like, let's just enjoy this and, hang out with friends and play games and yell at the top of her lungs and wake up my kids. Like I do like every single night that I game, like just having fun with it. So that's a long response, but I feel like that was just something just to, to add on to just starting out streaming, you know, and no, just having I, fun with it, you know, I, I, I think you hit on something that Colt and I, we talk about frequently is it, it is a crowded space, but that doesn't mean there's not room if you're in it. Yeah for the right reasons i think a lot of people though they look at content as it's a 
get quick, get rich quick scheme. There you go, man. I can, you mean all I have to do is just stream. All I have to do, I have to just make a TikTok and I can make money. Yeah. Yes, it's that simple. No, but it's not it's that not simple. Right. <laughs> exactly. I was, I and the was thing is, so many people, ahead. like you're talking about, they uh, start out streaming and and they may start out, like you said, on an Xbox with no webcam, and they get frustrated because they look at other big creators and they think they have a fancy camera, they have a nice PC, they have these monitors and these lights, and they think, well, I can't be as good as them if I don't get all that stuff. And so then mm-hmm. they start buying stuff that they don't need. When, right. When they need to realize it's about them and about crafting their community and finding what uh, their audience before they buy right. all that stuff. Exactly. Well, even just, and, go ahead. I, even just respecting the the craft, right? A lot yeah. of people just jump into this and they go, "Man, I'm going to be a pro streamer, just streaming from my Xbox Series X or my PS5, and that's that's Sweet, it." Baby. Uh, and yeah. could you make it with that? Maybe if you had such a big personality to carry you. Right. But for most people, it is the the skill in the craft of being a content creator. It's more than just pressing go live. It's more than just throwing up a couple of TikToks on your phone. There is a lot of work that goes into content, whether you just stream or you just make videos. Uh, the most successful creators, they have a plan. They know how to schedule they know how to manage the content right they know what the demand is for and they're feeding the algorithms whether that's for tiktok or youtube or even twitch right what's hot at the moment they're trying to drive those trends so deal with all of that said how does that affect so one tell us about your media company walter world media and tell us about like how that really kind of has affected your mindset as a content creator going from just you know content creator who has to manage all this to now business owner who now you have to do it for other people you could do it for yourself now you have to do it for someone who is willing to pay you right 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 um and that goes into like got that kind of goes into what we were just talking about too because like talking about how it's easy to make it's easy to make it here in content, but then it's not easy at the same time, right? You were talking about how, you know, you will, you go live and want to do, you know, wanting to just make a quick buck. And the thing is, the thing is in content, it doesn't have to be streaming. So I'm not just talking about streaming. I'm not just talking about gaming. I'm talking about content, whether it be TikTok, Instagram, running social media for somebody, whether it be anything in the content space, you can, you, you have the potential to make like, an obscene amount of money in some in some in some instances, right? Mm-hmm. You do, and that comes from the skills that you get from being in the space long enough, right? Because I can go to somebody now, where before when I first started, I wouldn't have dreamed of going to somebody and saying, "Hey, it's gonna char- it's gonna cost you this many hundred dollars for me to," or even in some cases, depending on the client, it's gonna cost you a thousand and some for me to do this for you. You know, like I wouldn't have dreamed of doing that like back then, but now because of the skills that I've gone through from learning how to edit video, learning how to be a content creator, learning how to do all this, it transferred over to now like, cool, like now with these skills that I've learned from managing media, from managing social media, from editing video, from streaming, I can transfer for that. I'm transferring that over now to running my own business where now I can be like, Hey, like I know what I'm doing. Here's my credibility. Here's what I've accomplished. Here's, here's what I've done on my own brand. Let me do this for your brand too. Um, and so it's been a weird transition though. I'll tell you that from, cause I was so, I was making my own content for so long, like, you know, going on going. And now all of a sudden I'm making content for other people. And it's such a weird shift because I enjoy it. And I think it's been, it's been an amazing thing to like take that skill, but it's so different than creating content for yourself. It's such a weird thing because when I'm creating, when I'm creating content for other people, it's, it's, it's more of a, obviously it's a job, right? But it feels more of a job rather than like using my creativity to like create something that I know may not get a million views or, or it's creating something out of my own like desire just to create. And like, if it gets, if it gets 10 views, cool. Awesome. Like at least I had that moment to get my creativity out there for myself rather than dang, dude, I better make this a banger or otherwise like these people who I'm running social media for, like, they're going to be like, Hey dude, like, (laughs) you know, paying you this much money a month, how come we're not seeing results, right? And so it's such a different, 
And I would say too, if you're working for yourself and creating your own content, it, that the same desire is there too. It's like, man, I got to make sure that I'm making good content that's going to push people to want to keep going to my content. Hopefully through that content, I get sponsors through that content. I get brand deals through that content, right. all that's happening, but it's such a different, it's a different, it's just, I don't know how to explain it mentally. It's just it, weird. It, it's you almost know? when you're a content creator working for yourself, you're managing your own expectations, which sometimes can be astronomical, right? I know yeah. uh, you put a lot of time into a video or into like a whole stream layout and you've really right. thought of rebrand and you launch it and it just doesn't get what you thought it was going to get. And versus when you're working for someone there, you're like, Holy crap. They're paying me to do this. I said I was going to deliver this. Can I deliver it? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes I know it sounds weird. Obviously it is totally reliant on, on you putting in the work, but at the same time, there's those moments where it's like, dude, we, 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 this, this ad was, was great. Like we put it together. Awesome. Like it is directed it is targeted and then it flops and you're like, what went wrong? We have no idea what just went <laughs> wrong right now. Why did our $150 ad or $300 ad like get no return? Right. And so then I have to look at myself and be like, crap, like what did I do wrong here? Let's go back and take a look at like all the, you know, any sort of mistakes maybe that were made, but sometimes like, Sometimes with content, there's that ebbs and flows too. Even I've noticed, even with businesses, even when posting on Facebook and social media and and all this stuff and Instagram for businesses, there's ebbs and flows just like there's ebbs and flows for a content creator. And so even doing more research and now not just only focusing on gaming content, but I'm focusing on coffee content. I'm focused on barbershop content. I'm Mm -hmm. focused on... Uh, real estate content on financial on financial service content on like you know it goes on tattoo parlor now content like uh real estate everything it's just you're you're it's just scopes out so different each area of content is so different than gaming but the cool thing is that it's content is content and you use those same principles that you learned for i that i've learned through through the gaming side of things and implement it more so in their respected you know, niches that I need to do. Right. Yeah. And so it's just weird because it, to another thing that's because you have used, I use all my creative energy all day for just like posting for typing <laughs> out, you know, typing Definitely. out captions. And so when the time comes to do my stuff, I'm like, dude, like I want to, <laughs> but dude, my, I'm like, my mind is fried exactly. from trying to create things for other people. And I <laughs> love it. Don't get me wrong. This is me saying like, man, I hate this job. No, like I spend more time with my kids than I ever had my entire life. Like, I've have more time with my family more than ever. Like I wouldn't trade doing this for anything, but when it comes to, when it comes to creating my own content now, because I also feel like I'm still, you know, still in some sort of way, still supposed to do content creation for myself. And I feel like there's still stuff that I have to offer in this space, whether it be through the gaming stuff or through the family content that we're putting out. I know that I have something to offer in this space and I want to continue to offer but obviously the well-being of my company and my family takes precedence over that because the company does well, then my family's provided for, taken care of. And so it's that weird yeah. kind of like now where it's where now it's pressure, not a, a bit of pressure. Yeah, a little more pressure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's like, man, I just spent, you know, and obviously the, my wife's on board with a lot of like, you know, mo- you know, pretty much everything that we're doing with content for even with the family channel and stuff like that. And so I have to like weigh it out. Like, man, I spent three hours last week editing our, our latest family vlog, you know, and that could have been three hours that I was putting towards a client. And hopefully, you know, that would get seen by another, you know, potential client that I can get more money from. Right. right. And so it's this weird, it's this weird thing. And so really trying to balance it where it's like running your own business. Cause like, dude, it's 24 seven, there's no clocking out there. Yep. This it's really tough to like, I have to like, make sure that I clock out. My wife tells me now that I have to clock out. Otherwise I'll just keep working. I'll work yeah, till 3 AM if I need to, you know, and it's tough though, because you want, you want to keep going. There's no one to tell you to stop. There's no one to tell you to start either, which is also a bad thing because there's some days where I don't start working until like 1 PM and not because I don't want to just because life is happening and you're running your own business. So there's a little more flexibility with certain things. Yep. Um, yep. And so, yeah, dude, it's been, it's been good. It's been weird, but it's been, benef- I think beneficial in the long run because I feel like even through this now I'm learning more skills of how to implement it even to my own personal content. 
as well yeah. by running stuff for other people and seeing how other content niches work, seeing other things yeah. operate, all those different things. And so it's been it's been definitely a journey. I definitely do miss doing my own content a lot of the times. Um, a lot, actually. I, I, I miss doing it a ton. Let's um, go, let's go back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about uh, diving like head first into starting your own company, you know, back at the beginning. So you were making content really solid and you were pretty successful at, yeah. you know, gaining concurrent viewers on Twitch and, you know, posting your videos and everything like that. So what made you want to start your own business? Like wh what triggered you to say, you know, I want to cut back on being the face of the creation to start creating for other people. What, and what, what did you see as was a better business opportunity? Right. I think, I think about that all the time, to be honest, there's, there's one of those things. I feel like, I feel like that if I went one way or the other, I feel like I could be in the same spot I am now in a good way, okay. like increasing yeah. and growing and stuff like that. However, at the time, like when it came to finances and stuff like that, the better choice was to pull the trigger and run my own company because I had people that I knew that wanted to use me to run their socials and all their stuff and help them run their business and like things like that. So that was a big okay. trigger too. So you basically had some startup clients that you knew that you could get kicked off. You weren't going to start, right. you know, just cold Turkey and try to find right. people. <laughs> right. So I knew that even then I would be able to like, I, right in that moment, I knew that I would almost double my income from just that. And the cool thing is that I was able to keep my church. I kept my, so basically cool thing, what happened with my church, cause I was doing all the, I'm still doing all the media for the church. What yeah. happened is, is I'm basically still doing the same job at my church, but my company is hired out by my church instead of just me. So my pastor's like, I'm going to hire your company to do the socials, to do all that stuff. And you just get to work from home and do your own thing. You're <laughs> I'm, I am, I am hiring your company. I'm not, you're not an employee of mine. I'm hiring your company Contract. and that's how we're going to do it. Right. And so I didn't lose that either. So it wasn't like I'm done working in the church. My income was still at the church, but it's still, it just flip flopped to me being there all the time to obviously it took a cut and pay. Obviously, because I wasn't a full-time employee at the church. It was more so like, right. Hey, you're running this, right. but I still had enough to be like, okay, let's make this, this shift over. Right. Um, and I think too, in the beginning, when I was, when I started the company, I was doing content pretty strong uh, still, but then it just kind of shifted to, I really want to focus on this company because um, I know that there's more guarantee with a lot of it. Now, don't get me wrong. When it comes to any sort of content, even in this space, even in the, in, even in a, a business that runs, everything's run on contracts. So tomorrow, mm -hmm. one of my a high paying client could be like, Hey, you got a month I'm like, well, frick, you know, it's kind of that thing, like having a bad, it's not like having a bad sub month, man. Like when I was doing, when I was doing Twitch pretty much full time during 2020 and 2021, like I'd have some months that man, I had, you know, I made $2,500 this month. And then the next month I'd be like, man, I ate it. I made 800. Like, how are we going to live off of this? Right. Or like, luckily, you know, stuff was still going to the church. I was still helping. So, you know, I was still a youth pastor and we were still doing certain things, but like it was, you know, it would just, there's ebbs and flows and there's ebbs and flows in running a creative business because there's some people that maybe they caught on to how to run it and they want to try to run it themselves for a second. And they don't necessarily want to pay someone hundreds of dollars to run all their stuff or mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. the economy stuff right now and they can't afford to like drop that much money, you know? And so it's, it's the same feeling, but it's easier for me to go out into our community and be able, and see people who need help social media wise and be like, Hey, this is what I can offer you. I'll do all this for you for this much money. And we can do it today. I can start today. We'll sign the contract and let's go. And nine times out of 10, that happens. Right. So I know from that standpoint, do I, do I think that if I were to step back into content, like full fully, like I did, do you, do I think, I think that I, and I don't, I'm not saying this to brag about myself, but I think that if I, if I went into it full fully, like I was, I think it would be, I think I could even push it further because of now all that I've learned through my business and through how to manage things, I've learned a lot of management through running my own business of like posting and scheduling and the importance of when to post and my target audience and who am I reaching to, you know, all these different things I've learned even through helping other content creators. I edit videos for other content creators for YouTube. I've learned SEO through YouTube. I do, I've done all of it, but at the moment that's not in the cards, but my hope is right. that as I grow my company, 
my goal is I think in the next two years, two, three years, my, as I grow the company, especially we're, we're thinking about some, some locational move stuff here in about a year or so um, that will help potentially my business as well. Um, just looking at different aspects of being like, Hey, I want to start, you know, I want to bring at least two people on like as contract workers that are basically workers, but contracted and to help me run this thing. So that way I can just be an owner instead of just an owner operator all the time. Right. And so there's those different things we're making that progress to do so. So yeah, it's, it's weird, but it's, it's cool, you know? And I think like, I think back on that all the time, like, man, what if I would have gone this direction? I think I still would be in the same spot. I think it would just look different. It would just be totally different, you know? So about content creation, something that I think you spawned off while you were still pretty much full-time creator, but it is a big part of who you are and what you do. Tell us about the parental unit community that you've built. Uh, how did yeah. it get started? What is it? Right. Um, yeah, that's a huge part too, man. There's so many things that my hands are in. It's so funny. <laughs> I look at it. I'm like, okay, how am I doing all, what do I do right now with all this stuff? Um, you know, um, parental unit started because obviously I'm a dad and I game and I realized that parent gamers, I kept getting like, I, I may, was making some parent content. And I realized every time that I posted something, there would be somebody in the comments being like, wow, get a job. Wow, you're a pathetic dad because you game. Wow, game, <laughs> video gaming leads to violence. I guess that your children are going to be school shooters. And I'm like, what? Like, How dare was- you be an adult and have hobbies? <laughs> How <Exactly>. dare you? <laughs> and I'm like, dude. And then I know it's from watch guys. TV like everyone else do. Right. Can't you just I watch know. sports every Sunday and get ESPN Plus to watch every single game at a two, like a two by two inch screen on your TV every single Sunday? Like you do, you know, like it's, it's, it was those people. It was people who were like just diehard sports fans getting upset that I game. And so I started that because I'm like, dude, like, why do people have this weird stigma about, parent gamers or people who game in general. And I was like, this is stupid. Like, let's do something and create a whole community or create something that is going to be just a hub for parent gamers to hang out in and to game together with and to have community with and, to, you know, build friendships with. Right. And the same thing, the same thing that I felt when I first started streaming of, you know, not having friends of even being a parent, and nobody really our age had kids. And so it was really hard to connect with some of those people because they wouldn't understand like the whole thing of like, oh, dang, I got to go because I got to get my kid down for a nap. Or man, I got to go because like it's bedtimes right now. This is, rough, you know, <laughs> and so um, no one would understand that. And so I, I started it because I knew that there was parents out there and they didn't have to be streamers. They just just gamers like or and we have a lot of creators, too, in our in the parental unit as well. Um but just seeing, you know, seeing the need for like a place for parents to be. So we started it and day one, day one, we had a thousand people join literally within a span of an hour. I was like, dude, I was on my computer, like updating discord and like trying to make sure things weren't like overloaded and there was no bots getting in. And like, I was just like going overtime, had to make people mods. Like it was just insane. <laughs> um, and so I built that just because like, I don't know. I mean, I'm a dad and I'm a parent, like I said, and I just wanted a place for other parents and dads and moms who game to, to hang out. You know, we even created, it's cool. We're we started, we just started this the other, the other month and we started a little uh, section in our discord community for like um, parents who have kids who are old enough to game, like, uh, you know, who are like, you know, play Fortnite or whatever for them to even like, if they wanted to, to connect and stuff like that and to hang out and, and to, to play games and everything like that and created a whole military section for military veterans who are parents as well. So they can connect even on that level. Like we have, we literally created everything imaginable for, it doesn't matter what kind of life, like a single parents area, like a, you know, even a military spouse area. So these, so these people who are connected through gaming, but connected through these ways, you know, this kind of life that they have to live an area to connect. And so that's become just in general. And that also spawned our family content that we, that we're doing our family vlog channel too, because we're just all parents, like wanting to game, wanting to hang out, wanting to create, wanting to live life. And so just kind of creating that aspect for them to be a part of it, even you know, it's still in its very baby stages, but even having people who are creators for parental unit, because like I, I was thinking like, man, I don't think there's anybody who's going to sign a 
you know, a phase isn't going to go sign a 40 year old dad who's like cracked out of his mind, even if he's cracked out of his mind. <laughs> They're just not, it's and it's not, it's, it's not true. saying anything bad to the dad who's a gamer. It's just like, it's just fact. And so, creating, almost creating that opportunity to like be a part of something, like, you know, the dad who always wanted to be a pro gamer or wanted to be like, uh, a content creator, but like their whole life they couldn't, or the parents didn't approve of it. And now they work at nine to five, you know, or even oh, maybe like more so five to five blue collar job. And like, they just want to be a part of something that, and they love gaming. And so giving them that both sense of belonging, that's not just, man, I'm just a worker from nine, from five to five. I'm, I'm a creator. I get to create, I get to be a part of something that's bigger than myself, you know? And that's so that's awesome. a big reason why we created parental unit was that, and um and just wanted to be a light to parents man you know a big big reason too was uh for streaming was to just be a light for uh for christ and using that aspect in the parental unit too because if i can if i can reach parents i can i can reach the whole family you know right, definitely. Um, and so that was a big big reason too for just just being a light in that community and all that stuff that's awesome all right so let's go into uh <clears throat> some lessons learned or not learned quick enough. Um, so what's one piece of advice that you wish that someone had given you when you started the one piece of advice? Um, I think it's a piece of advice that L I think that every established content creator uh, says this it was stream less and create content more. I wish I would have taken that advice way earlier. Cause I was you started on YouTube and just started creating content. And- yeah. Yeah, rather than I wish I would have had the <laughs> the the um what is it the courage or the the yeah I guess courage is a weird word to use in that but just the the um I can't think of another word not being afraid or uh, unafraid to like do something like that because I was always afraid what people look like how people would look at me if mm-hmm. I were to do some sort of funny content or like I think the very first TikTok I ever made was literally me overcoming my fear of like putting my face on the camera and doing something. Mm-hmm. Like that was the very first TikTok. That was after I streamed for about six months, but it was like my first, like, it was like a voiceover. It was like, you know, making a funny scene. I was like, oh gosh, like (laughs) this is going to (laughs) be, I was like, dude, I'm just like, I don't know. This is going to be stupid. Like I'm going to look dumb. And I did it. And it just was like, man, I should have done this sooner. Like I wish I would have done TikTok and I wish I would have done YouTube sooner too. I streamed mm-hmm. a lot. I was streaming a lot, but I wasn't streaming like 20 hours a day or something like that, you know, like, but I was still doing a lot more streaming in short form rather than putting some effort into some long form content as well. Um, I think that was a big thing that I, I wish I would have hopped on YouTube way sooner. What do you think your biz- biggest success in content creation and media production has been so far? Uh-huh. And what has also been your biggest mistake? So contrasting biggest W biggest L. Oof, jeez, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I think I feel like my biggest. Look, uh, I'm trying to think. I th- I think I've had many big accomplishments. I don't think I could put one as the biggest in my opinion. I think oh, let me give you my top three biggest accomplishments. I think number one was gaining the following that I did in the short amount of time that I was able to do it. I think that was that was for me. That was more of not being like how look how many followers I have. It was more so like. I think it was an affirm- affirmation to me where it was like, wow, like you actually can do this. Like, this isn't just like a cool, like, you know, man, I wish I could No, It's like, man, like I have, I actually have the the skill to, or even just the tenacity to be a content creator or even to like move forward in that direction. Right. Uh, so and that was that, I think that was just a big accomplishment for me was like, I never thought in a million years that I would have that many, that much following, on even just TikTok in general, like I thought TikTok was the dumbest thing on the face of the planet when I first started. <laughs> so did I. And then, <laughs> and then here too. we are. And I think even during COVID, there was people like, well, TikTok, you know, that's, you know, run by the devil, you know. Like, <laughs> we, were, we were at Guardian Con in 2019 and yeah. Truth had gotten this like little deal thing to post so many things on TikTok. And I think he got paid a little bit of money or something. And we're like, what is TikTok? And he showed us. He's like, it's a dancing app. And we're like, why are you making videos on a dancing app? And he's like, I don't know, man. (laughs) Um, Jokes on us. Right, exactly. And I just think it was just a cool accomplishment to to do that. Um, A cool accomplishment 
the two was also to be able to inspire other people to create content. I think that was really awesome to see that because like, I don't know, it's, the, it's this weird feeling still like, cause I think I followed somebody on Twitter the other day that I like their content. They always interacted with my stuff and I was like, Oh, your content's pretty cool. So I followed them. And then like, they tweeted out like, Oh my gosh, like deadly deal. Like follow me on Twitter. I was like, dude, I haven't streamed in like hardly in eight months. I haven't created any content, but to have an impact, that's a good impact that, that in this, in this space, like it just makes me mm-hmm. feel like it's a huge accomplishment. Cause that's what I stepped into to do too. Not just to like, you know, gain a bunch of followers or to make a ton of money, but I just wanted to make a difference in the space and to show love to gamers, show love to people to be a light in a place that has a lot of darkness, to be honest. And doing that, I think another thing was being able to like, um, you know, from even the, my, you know, from the Christian standpoint and pastoral standpoint, even to see people come to Christ through gaming, and which has been the craziest thing still in this, to this day, being able to share that with people and then actually be like, okay, cool. I want to actually do this. I want to follow Jesus. And I'm like, wait, what you do? Like, I literally just, we just, <laughs> I literally just teabagged somebody in this game and annihilated a one V three, like, and you want to come to know the G come to know Jesus. I think I have this one guy. He said, the first time I ever came into your stream was you just got done teabagging somebody. And you were praying for somebody at the same time as you were doing. <laughs> and he's like, I've been a follower ever since. <laughs> um, but I think that, I think seeing the fact that, man, I can do this, um, being able to influence people in a positive way and being able to see people come to know who Jesus is through just gaming and just encouraging people and seeing people like, honestly, I've had several people say, man, I was going to kill myself tonight. And, but after what you talked about on your stream, like, I don't want to do that anymore. So like stuff like that, like just being able to do that and show people their worth, you know, and being able to be that encouragement has been huge. Um, I think, um, I think one of my biggest, I think mistakes, I guess that would be maybe more so like mistakes or biggest, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to say failures. Cause you know, no, it's only a failure if you don't learn from it. Um, opportunity, if you learn opportunity, from, from, right. Yeah. Opportunity for religion. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I think maybe caring too much about what other people say about me. I think that's a big thing. You know, we talked about having to almost like you have to be, almost a little callous skinned in this game and like being like, uh, you know, callous, but then also still open at the same time. I think yep. I allowed people to influence me too much and to trigger me too much and to lose my cool a little too much. Um, whether it be creators that I didn't agree with or people that, you know, um, that maybe I agreed with, but then they just, they just frustrated me or whatever, or things they said, or taking things too, too much to heart and allowing it to affect me as a creator and yeah. to stop creating at some point. I think a big reason too, well, there's a period where I just didn't want to create anymore because I was like, dude, like people don't even, I feel like people don't even see the value of what I'm putting out. But then like, you know, seeing the stuff that I just said, like almost it contradicts the way that I was feeling what people say. Cause if mm. what people were saying was true, then the other side wouldn't be even in existence if that was the case. Right. So just say, I think, I think I allowed people to get under my skin too much and I almost, I create, I allowed it to be bitter bitterness inside of me too. Um, I think I even walked through a moment when I first started and you guys will know what I'm talking about. Um, when I first started doing all this, probably like two years in, I just felt like I almost like, didn't understand like what was true when it came to like my faith, because we'd have, there's so many people telling me that I'm wrong or that, you know, even calling me a false prophet at one point. I'm like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I'm so confused. Like, I really am not like, if I, if, if I am wrong, like tell me in a way that's not going to be like, you devil. You didn't know you were prophet. a prophet to start with. Did you? Dude, I need to, I need that's to know. Right, that's like the this most misused word, like I mean, misused set of words there is. False prophet. I, yeah, I think the only teacher. prophet I am is is money related. You got to be claimed, you got to claim to be a prophet before you can be a, be a false yeah. prophet. Uh, that's it. I'm a prophet. Prophet. Call me prophet deadly. <laughs> <laughs> I no. make profit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's just one of those like I think I allowed that to like really, really get to me. You know. Um, Cause I, I, I think it's, it's not out of, I think sometimes it's not out of the place of like, I, I, cause I, cause it truly deep down, I really don't care what people think. Like I'll be the first one to tell you that you're full of crap or in that, or I disagree with you or that you're being stupid or whatever. I will, 
it, but at the same time, I think it's more so out of my love and affection for people and how much I, I care for people that when it, there is that kind of disagreement or that, that tension between two people, it frustrates me because it's not because I, you know, I'm because I think uh, of who I am is, is maybe necessarily just not the greatest or whatever. It's simply because of that tension between someone like, Hey, like, I really don't want and I don't, don't want this odd against us, but somehow there's this weird thing that's between us that we may never agree upon. And that sucks. But understanding yeah. that not everybody's that we're not going to be friends with everybody. You know, that's something that we learn as kids mm-hmm. even yeah. too. Like we're not going to yeah. be friends with everybody, but I think that's the biggest thing is that tension between somebody that I have no issue with at the end of the day. But there's that, you know, there's that, that, that wanting to show love to everybody wanting to be, you know, be, kind to everybody but you can't you can but it's not always going to be reciprocated and that's not on me but maybe on the other person as well you know so that's i think that's one of the biggest things just letting people get under my skin too much and definitely yeah and, and i think you know when we talked about content creation you you're, you i think one of the things you have to understand is there are going to be people that like you there's going to be some people that if you're fortunate enough love you and they'll uh, support pretty much anything you do right and then you're gonna find that there's a group that despises you they can't stand anything to do about you it's just uh, so wild to me i'm like what have i done to you know like it's one of those things where like what have i done to you to like despise me this much <laughs> right exactly i'm like i don't even know you <laughs> so, it, it is yeah. what it is I, and that's yeah. one of the things you know that i think you know as much as in a Christian worldview, we want to love everybody. And right. I do think we get into Bambi mode where we're like, let's all just hold hands and sing Kumbaya. It's like, it doesn't work like that. Some people, even, as much as even we if we're to. as kind as we want to be or yeah. as uh, welcoming, there's just going to be some people that we can't please. And it's okay. You know, like, there's yeah. other people out there for them. Maybe, maybe they'll find them. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not always going to work as much as you want it to, as much as you want it to. Yeah. So I think, I think I would say that's my biggest, like, that was my, like, worst, like, moment that I went through or, like, my biggest, like, regret being a content creator and, like, kind of, like, one of my worser moments, I feel, was was that. Definitely. So, we're going to pivot to what we call the rapid fire round. So, we're going to ask a bunch of some serious, uh, some very not serious questions. <laughs> uh, rapid fire. So, shoot from the hip. Don't think, right. just answer. Um, I mean, you can think, but don't don't overthink it. It is what mm-hmm. it is, right? Go with your gut. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Go for it. What is your favorite video game of all time? Oh, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, uh, nice little Old Republic. Okay. I do that. He, yeah. he, he picked a good one. Cult, yep. next yep. one. Uh, we already know your answer to this, but I want the explanation. Kick or Twitch, and why? Uh, kick, because number one, there is more money to be made, and I don't care if that makes me sound greedy. That just it is for the work that you put in as a creator. Number two, there's constant updates, and I feel like I feel like Twitch is only doing constant updates now because Kick is doing constant updates, so they're trying to keep up and trying to do all the things that people wanted now all of a sudden. So to me. I get that's business, but to me, that just screams like red flag. Number two, uh, there's openness to multi-stream to do other things on different platforms. There's no restrictions to that. Um, and there's openness, but from all of the kick, um, uh, devs and executives as well, even in Twitter, interacting with people, talking with people, doing stuff like they're just moving forward. And I, it's not, to my opinion, it's not a mixer thing. Like how people are like, it's just going to be like mixer. No, this is a little different. Like I remember when mixer like went downhill and cause I started on mixer. And so, yeah, uh-huh. anyway, that's, that's what I think. Yep. Yeah. So Dill, what's yes. the dollar amount required for you to shave your beard? Uh, it has to be over $2,000. That's what Aki said. And that's what at, said. Two, at 2000 or somewhere over 2000 Somewhere like 2500 because the last time I shaved my beard was when we made we did $2,000 for charity. So, so if someone gave to... you, if someone said, Dill, I have two, $2,500 waiting for you. Bro, get that would, I would ready. get the straight edge and everything. Just, <laughs> I'd be baby How does face. your wife feel about beardless, Dill? 
that she just is confused she stares at me in disbelief so yeah. my son when i shaved it the last time would looked at me literally he's a two, one he was just turned one he looked at me and he said the, the night after the morning after i shaved he looked at me he said no mm-mm, no <laughs> and just and just crawled away i was like dang bro no it's it's not, let's do Beerless dill is not is is not a thing hardly ever unless I I shave my beard uh, so ADHD moment I, I shave my beard when I just am just done with like just everything because I'm just like let's just shave it off new beginnings like I'll grow up uh-huh. thicker and better next time right and so it's just like it's like it happens once like every five years or something like that I'm just like you know what I'm done with this and my wife's like what are you doing <laughs> anyway yep in there all right so what. <clears throat> What's a popular game that everyone seems to love but you don't like? Zelda. Zelda. That hurts. It's not I that I don't wait. like it. It's not that I'm like, I hate Zelda. It's like, I just, I tried playing it and I'm just like, eh. don't see the hype. Gotcha. See, I, I was on that fence before Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I was like, I legitimately don't understand this. Mm. I've played both and I'm like, I want to go back and play all of them. I love it. Like See, I, I got sucked in. I did breath of the wild for a little bit and it's fun, but I don't know. I just don't, I think it's because I don't know enough. Like even after watching lore videos, I'm like, this is confusing. You should this watch our lore con- video. Yeah. This is more confusing. <laughs> this is more confusing than the lore for kingdom hearts. Like that it is. I couldn't understand within now, like kingdom hearts lore. I, I watch a 30 minute video and I walked out of it being like, I still have no idea what's going on right now. So I, I, I will say part of my love for T- Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild and just Zelda in general sparked mm-hmm. from the countless hours of research <laughs> I did into Zelda lore for the lore video we did. The guys did. Guy. Now, dead serious. He was not that excited for the game. I actually would, was not even going yeah. to buy it or play it at all. He went into looking into the game and the lore behind Zelda and he and his excitement grew over one week of research. I was it was That's funny. Great. Great. I spent probably 20 hours of research on that video. And then I started playing Tears of the Kingdom. I said, Yep, this is the greatest game franchise of all time. Like <laughs> I, I was convinced. So uh, to I, me, I'm I, like, eh, I, I, I understand try. it. I may have to give it another try. We'll see. Don't let tracks hear that you Don't just own Mass Effect like that. <laughs> so, Dill, yes, I know you like Apex. You like competitive mm-hmm. FPSs. Yes, are esports a sport? Yes. Why? Um, I think because it takes the t- to do esports, like outside of just streaming, and you're just an FPS gamer. It takes skill. It takes time and dedication to studying the game, to how to how to play the game, different tactics for the game, all this stuff. I feel like Rainbow Six Siege, you watch those guys, and I'm like, bro, there's no other tactical shooters that I've seen these guys who are pro Rainbow Six Siege players. I haven't, like, it's insane to me. Like, Apex is cool. Like, I love seeing the competitive Apex. Bro, you mm-hmm. see some of these more tactical, like, bro, you, pe- you head peak one second, you're dead. Like, so I feel like I feel like it would be it's considered a, a a sport because of just the the work that goes into it in the like to be a professional gamer like there there are leaps and bounds between somebody who is just like myself who like plays Apex on stream and has fun to the guy who is like an Imperial Howl or like a you know his Watson who are just like cracked out of their mind because they play <laughs> the game and they've studied the game and they know the game they know the legends they know map rotations. They know all that. It's a skill. It's just like going from JV football all the way to NFL. It's just two totally different well fields. You play football, yeah. yes, but NFL is obviously requires more skill than playing on your JV high school football team. Right. Definitely. All right. So uh is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Yes. Thank you. You passed. <laughs> Why? why? How, how? It's, it's a taco compared to anything. No, no. not See, if the I, bun rips. The yeah, bun exactly. rips. It's a the sandwich. bun rip is the is the, always the, the typing point. The, the yeah, topic. Yeah. A sandwich has two pieces of bread. So if you rip the bun in half, we're not good. Subway. Yeah, Subway's tr- trash. <laughs> Every other sub place, pick it. They cut the bread. It's not in two pieces. So is a sub sandwich a hot dog? 
Yes, it's a taco. <laughs> <laughs> They're all tacos. Ultimately, all everything tacos. is a taco. <laughs> Everything's a taco. <laughs> I love it. Dill, how do you pronounce dot G-I-F? G- oh, uh, I, uh, GIF. Thank you. Oh, it's a GIF. It's a GIF. You don't <laughs> say graphic. I yeah, giraffe. Giraffe. I say, I giraffe. Giraffe interface. I say giraffe. Giraffic. I say giraffe. Giraffic park. <laughs> giraffic park. <laughs> giraffic park. <laughs> Roar. Welcome to the giraffic right. park. <laughs> All right, your second, your second question of whether you pass or not: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Hundred percent. Okay, you're one. The lie you're from the one, straight one from the devil's you mouth. Know that Satan's put that lie in the world, right? Well, okay. <laughs> Dude, That's, nothing hits more than pineapple pepperoni pizza. I don't care. I, I just want now you to you think. Just lost me. Pineapple ham, I would have let. Pineapple, no. I'm telling slide, you. But not look at me in my eyes, Colt. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> pineapple pepperoni. Look, look at me in my eyes. I can, I can guarantee you, I will never try it. Okay. Listen, Same. if I paid you ten bucks, what'd you do? Probably. Maybe. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cheap. I'd probably, I'm cheap. I'd probably eat some pizza. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably eat a pizza. Yeah, yeah. Ten bucks will almost buy it. That sounds fair. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, Dill, when yes. you decide, you wake up and you go, "Man, I want some delicious breakfast." You grab out your bowl, you grab the cereal, you grab the milk. What do you put in first? The cereal. Thank you. You're not a psychopath. Jeez, who are, I, the people who put the milk in first, you lose the amount of cereal you can put into the milk because when you put the cereal in, the cereal in first, and you dump the milk. The milk gets in all the crevices of the cereal and fills your bowl, and so therefore you have more cereal to milk ratio when you put the cereal first. It's just like ice and drinks. And exactly. now, okay, so this is another point. This is not a question that we had, but. <laughs> Psychotic people that don't that order drinks with no ice at a restaurant or at a fast food place, they're like, I want a large Coke with no ice. And I'm like, why would you get it with no ice? And they're like, it comes out of the machine cold and you get more. You get more. That's it doesn't come out of the machine brain cold. Take. I can totally tell yeah, you. It does, it not, does not. not. Not as cold as when it's on ice. Bro, that's, that's why you a- get extra ice and put it in a bigger cup. Yes. My wife you always order- gets extra ice at Sonic. You always always order an extra extra ice and you ask for it in a bigger cup. So that way you still get the same amount of drink, but you still get a great amount of ice. Gotcha. Okay, so um is it wrong to wear socks with your sandals? Oof. No, because I've been doing it lately. It's a dad thing. Right? That it's a dad it's why? more so it's more so if I'm going somewhere quick. Like if I'm going to the gas station and I got socks on and I don't want to throw on shoes, I want to throw on sandals real quick, little slides. Yeah. Bye. We're in Louisiana, bro. The standard of living is really low. So <laughs> I, mean, I, walk I know, out, I know y'all flat. Cajun people do weird things, but that's, that's, that's not right. I have to I blend it. I'm from California. Trust shoes. me. I have more style than half the people here, but, <laughs> 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 but people are always like, why is your head upside down? <laughs> I'm like, cause it's, it's branding like uphill upside down. <laughs> like, yeah. Get it? Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so no, I I think socks and sandals are acceptable depending on the situation. If it's a quick trip to the grocery store to your local Walmart, because everybody probably looking worse than you are when That's you go true. to a Louisiana That's local true. Walmart Fact. or a Circle K gas station to grab a Dr Pepper Zero. Hallelujah, Amen. Amen. You know, just it is what it is. But if I'm going out to an outing, like, and I'm wearing sandals, socks do not wear socks. But what about so speaking? Okay, I have I have I have a, a business that I want to start, and from a, from a business brand man, mm-hmm. would this be a great retail store? Socks and Crocs. I sell stylish socks. I sell Crocs. You Easy make money. matching combos. Dude, honestly, though, I think wearing socks with Crocs is acceptable. I, I, I'll go one step further. He should open a Crocs retail store called A Load of Croc. There you go. I'll one hundred percent. I'll one hundred percent invest in that business. <laughs> I'll be your first investor. <laughs> so, speaking of of beverages, Dill, why do you hate Baja Blast? It just tastes like. How, tastes how like did medicine. it hurt you? 
Show us where it, where did it hurt you? Right here. <laughs> right in the heart. It hurt my heart. No, the, honestly, like I just like I tried it and it's just I just didn't like it at all. Like it tastes you try the so frozen bad one. Yeah, I've tried every version of Baja Blast. The Baja Blast Energy, the Baja Blast Freeze, the Baja Blast Regular, the different kinds of Baja Blast. The only Baja flavor I liked was the orange one that came out two years ago when it had that. That that, that one was good. The yellow one was even worse than regular Baja Blast. That (laughs) yellow one was just straight garbage. It's like I straight agree with you. I straight Um, agree with you. It's terrible. But I just don't like it. It tastes to me, it tastes like it tastes like uh, suntan lotion. It, that's just what it tastes like to me. Like it tastes the smell of it. It tastes like watered down Sprite with like old suntan lotion mixed in. <laughs> that's the question like. though. You you had some kind of deal where you had to drink a six pack. Yeah, I like still got so week. I guess they stopped selling it, so I had to order it off Amazon. Oh, so wow. <laughs> I okay. got to order. I had to order out that because I tr- I looked everywhere, but I guess like the summer season for retail mm-hmm. for that technically ended. So I literally was looking all over the place for Baja Blast. Off the shelf, so I have to order like I ordered Baja Blast Zero though because your boy can't take that much sugar Amen. at all. <laughs> right, staying on brand, staying on brand. What's your go-to Taco Bell order? Oh, that just depends. Sometimes, sometimes the five one of those five layer uh, five uh, five dollar boxes just hit whatever is popular at the moment. It uh-huh. always comes with a beefy five layer burrito and a chalupa mm, and then whatever is popular. Right there. Ooh, that hallelujah! Thank beefy you, Jesus. five layer burrito. Oh my goodness. But if I'm like ordering just to order and I'm just being a fat kid for the day yeah. and I'm just like I don't care about life, I'm expecting I'm fully expecting myself to be on the toilet for at least an hour. Um, I'm gonna be getting number one, Crunch Wrap Supreme, classic. Number two, cheesy gordita crunch. Gotta have that, hundred percent. Crunch Wrap um, Supreme. That's the diarrhea frisbee, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> number two, a beefy five layer burrito, but you ask them to grill it. They put it on the little griller and it's grilled. Amen. Hallelujah. Next, a steak quesadilla. You got to get that. And then to finish it off, a steak chalupa. And we call it a day. That does sound good. That That's sounds like order. the ultimate big boy meal. Dude, <laughs> I'm hungry. I have a ritual I that, um, I get a beefy five layer burrito every single time, but I always have to eat it before I get home. So I'm like driving through town, like pulling this wrapper like, back, trying to put the hot sauce like on, the thing, <laughs> wrapping it back. Yeah, I love it so much, it dude. The beefy five. I remember when those first came out. Do you remember? Do you remember? Like, dude, this is so long. This is like call it. Like we're we're all, everyone's we're all thirty, right? Thirty five. No. <laughs> There's you're thirty five, Cole. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not for thirty five. Uh, I'm not thirty. How old are you? Uh, 28. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking to the boomers in the room here, Cole, me and you yeah, back yes. in our day. <laughs> Do you remember like the, de- like they, it was like a, like they had the deal meals where it was like the chicken burrito, the beefy five layer, and you got like a drink and like a cinnamon twist and stuff like that. Yeah. I would yeah. always go to Taco Bell after like youth group and just go, go ham on that dude. hundred mm. yep. percent. That's the way to do. Well, <clears throat> Dill. Thank you, yeah, for your time today, dude. It's been fun talking and catching up, and always hearing your your thoughts on content creation and Taco Bell orders. Uh, I may have to try that big boy order on one of my dude. cheat days, dude. All or listen, there's another one, a quesarito too, in replacement of one of those items, a mm-hmm. steak quesarito. Boy, whoo. I'll slap someone's mama for that one. <laughs> 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 not my mom but I'll find another mom are you a mom <laughs> why'd you slap me that Taco Bell order was busting <laughs> straight busting no cap <laughs> zero cabbage bro <laughs> love it well uh, Dill if people want to look you up and follow you on the social medias how do they do that um I mean, I'm deadly. I'm either deadly Dill or deadly Dill Gaming on all platforms. So Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, all those places. So I'm on just deadly Dill or deadly Dill Gaming. Um, most of them I switched to deadly Dill now. Finally, I was able to get the gaming off a lot of them. But um, anyway, so yeah, so I'm I'm on I'm on pretty much every platform that you're you can find me on, uh, but mainly I'm on Twitter a lot too. So like all my stuff is in my bio and Twitter as well. So X. What's oh, sorry, X. Yeah. What's Twitter? Okay. Sir, our, 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 <laughs> sir, Elon, 
does not go. Sir Elon. Sir Elon. So pre May 2023. How dare you? (laughs) <laughs> how dare i get with the time scrub <laughs> grandpa <laughs> Your boom is showing. <laughs> no yeah what i'm on i'm basically on every platform so you can just follow me wherever all right folks follow the man here what need, he has to say uh, any kind of social media management or editing or cool things like that to make you uh super famous and rich then uh ask ask dill and he'll get you hooked up He's a false I'm, prophet, so he'll help I'm you a, make profits, <laughs> right? He can, he Prosperity can false prophet, too. Prosperity, yes. Yes. I'm like that guy. What's his name? Uh, he's in Louisiana. He, he's, I, there's been a bunch of clips of him. Like, he's like, I own the biggest house in Louisiana. And he was like, I paid it all in cash. I was like, boy, use the church fund to pay that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you try that to be like you I paid swiped for. after the service. <laughs> <laughs> I swiped on the church's American Express platinum car <laughs> made with real diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Oh, it was good, well, guys. Seriously, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks likewise, for... Dill. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Appreciate y'all. And I'll catch y'all later. God bless. Later, guys. Dude, tacular.